Well, good morning, everyone. Um, hello, good, good morning. So, indeed, uh, we're going to talk for the next 30 minutes about what does it mean to be responsible as a corporation. And indeed, um, I do think there is a shift in paradigm that we are seeing accelerating even, because probably a few years back, if you ask corporations or a CEO, what is your responsibility, they would have said, you know, it's, it's shareholder return on investments, it's profits. And clearly in Europe, um, I think we are, we are past that stage. Um, if you look back at just the last year, many CEOs of very large corporations in France in particular have gone forth in the media, they have announced um, their plans for uh, inclusive growth, they have announced their plans for environment, sustainability, etc. So clearly a shift in paradigm um, that started in, in Europe. And if you look just uh, a month ago in the US, uh, many big corporations, I think uh, about 185 of the largest US corporations, including Accenture, signed the business roundtable uh, pledge, which basically recognized that the responsibility of corporations goes beyond shareholder return investment. It's a responsibility for all, for all stakeholders. Um, President Macron, for example, as well, launched a number of initiatives recently, like Tech for Good, uh, Business for Inclusive Growth, where he's trying to rally corporations to really demonstrate they can have a social impact and an impact for good. Why is that happening? I think very clearly because there's new expectations from all stakeholders about the role of, of um, corporations in, in society. Um, we did a survey um, just a few months back uh, where clearly 60% of corporations expected this impact of demand on, on corporations to continuously step up. So it's um, request by customers. I mean, they want more sustainable, better quality products. And I think actually quite interestingly, uh, they're willing to pay for it. They're willing to pay extra for better products. Um, we see demand from employees. I mean, at Accenture, we are a tech company. We see many, we employ many young people, uh, next generations, and basically they want a purpose. Um, they're questioning, you know, should we be doing certain types of projects for um, certain clients? So for example, they're questioning, should we be doing facial recognition projects for um, governments in certain countries? So they're really actively engaging, and, and positively, um, they're very willing to volunteer times to work on projects which give them a sense of purpose. So clearly we see this acceleration of demand on, on businesses. Um, historically, I would say, if I look back at what we at Accenture were doing around social responsibility, it was a lot about philanthropy. It was about pro bono. So giving time of our employees, either through volunteering actions or pro bono consulting work for NGOs to have a social impact. Um, and in the survey, again, we saw that 90% of big corporations do have those programs. But I would say that's just the first step. Um, the second step is really to embed corporate responsibility into your own operations. And I'm sure as you do, uh, Antoine, um, you know, making sure that we are a diverse and inclusive employer, making sure that uh, we manage our carbon footprint in the most efficient way. Uh, working on our products and, and um, our products um, throughout the whole manufacturing and, and supply chain. Um, and indeed, more and more, being responsible as a corporation is about embedding this notion of business responsibility into everything we do, from the products we develop, the way it's brought to the market, to um, how we manage employees for, for a broader uh, societal impact. Um, I'm going to show one slide uh, which says that indeed, when corporations do that, it's actually an investment that is profitable. Because some people could say, but it, you know, it's going to cost more. You want to be uh, adding quality to your products, you want to be more diverse, etc. Is that a cost and how is that sustainable? And the research that we did, we correlated the performance of um, companies which do stand out in terms of their corporate responsibility against their profit, against their growth, against their shareholder return, against their profit. And actually the best performers 
do outperform um, others in the average. And why is that? I think it's because at the end of the day, being responsible is about embedding into the organization good practices. Again, in this survey, what we did is we compared high growth companies versus average um, performers, and we correlated their performance against their performance against uh, ESG criteria, so environmental, social governance uh, criteria. And what also we showed is that across all countries, across all sectors, the companies which have a better ESG performance actually uh, are also growing faster. Because again, at the end of the day, it's not about philanthropy. It's about transparency. It's about innovation with purpose. It's about um, uh, leveraging the human capital that you have uh, across all dimensions. So it's about embedding good practices that will benefit fall. So I'm going to turn to you, Antoine, because you're probably one of those uh, high-performance companies um, which are very much standing, uh, standing apart in terms of ESG performance. So why don't you tell us what you're doing? So uh, thank you, uh, Laurence. So what we try to do uh, is both uh, making a bank we can explain to our children uh, and uh, be in a position uh, to seize all the opportunities uh, of the big change that is uh, happening uh, around us. And we really believe that it is very important to work uh, both on this uh, ethical foot, because uh, people want more ethics, they really uh, want uh, the, 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 the growth to be more uh, ecological and to be more inclusive, and we, we have to, uh, to look for a real impact, and we have to, to look for a real human impact. But at the same time, if you uh, look in history, uh, since the, the Greeks who did uh, create the concept of banking, uh, banks have always worked uh, to help the people uh, to go into transition, and the good business has always been uh, in the opportunities that are created by the, the need for transition. Uh, and being able to seize all those opportunities uh, really needs to create uh, a discipline uh, of uh, going uh, to uh, change uh, and to seize those, uh, those opportunities. So the first thing we have done uh, at BNP Paribas is to put the 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals of United Nations within our corporate platforms. It's a declaration, but it's not only a declaration, it's also a very clear uh, and very matter-of-fact KPIs. Uh, we created with VGO a methodology that allows us to know uh, which part uh, of our credit uh, directly uh, uh, contribute to those uh, SDGs, and uh, we uh, uh, are uh, creating uh, uh, objectives that are directly uh, linked uh, to the SDGs, uh, and we try to uh, reach those objectives. For example, uh, we have an objective of increasing the financing of renewable uh, energy. Uh, when we started all this, we were only uh, at 7 uh, billion uh, euros, uh, and we set an objective to go uh, at uh, uh, 15 uh, billion uh, by 2020, but in fact, because it was an objective of a company, uh, we did massive training, uh, we did uh, massive uh, also a change of our processes and our risk processes uh, to allow all the people in the company uh, to understand all the new business models that were coming with renewable energy, and because we have done all this effort, we have reached our goal of 15 billion euros uh, by uh, 2018. So uh, we, it's, uh, it's really important uh, that we have uh, objectives uh, and, uh, and KPIs. So this is, uh, generally speaking, uh, our uh, um, uh, attention to the 17 uh, SDGs. Uh, but we decided to go deeper into the organization. Uh, we decided to look excel for excellence in four areas. First area is what we call CSR policy. What is a CSR policy at BNP Paribas? It's simply what we, are, uh, what we agree to finance 
and what we do not agree to finance and under which condition. So, for example, we have decided to pull out uh, of uh, financing of shale oil, uh, of tar sands uh, petrol. Uh, we have ruled out uh, any Arctic drilling. Uh, and, uh, and at the same time, it's important to understand that BNP Paribas is a bank for corporates. We are in 73 countries and we have been financing the business for 200 years. So our business, uh, the financing the business is really the, the um, I would say, the, the core uh, of uh, uh, BNP Paribas. And BNP was created uh, uh, 200 years ago to finance the business. So we finance the business a different way. And we have ex ruled out uh, several uh, energy uh, areas to be able to have more money and more space to finance other uh, energy uh, areas such as uh, renewable. So these are the CSR policies. Uh, diversity and inclusion, we also look for excellence. For example, we have took very uh, advanced stances uh, for LGBT rights. We are considered as one of the most uh, uh, advanced companies in the, in the world in this area. Positive impact business, it's a new way to do business. We, for example, we do cheaper credit uh, for the company who take uh, strong CSR objectives. For example, in uh, Europe, you have a, a, a chemical company which is Solvay, which is one of the most uh, advanced companies uh, with the, uh, by uh, taking very clear uh, CO reduction objectives. So when Solvay gets a credit at BNP Paribas, it's cheaper because they have taken very uh, clear uh, objective. It's an example of positive impact business. And finally, employee engagement. We look also to be uh, excellent in this area, which means uh, um, training the people, uh, creating community of pioneers. We will go maybe uh, on this a, a bit later. Uh, and also, for example, uh, uh, promoting uh, good practices among employees. For example, we are very proud to announce that by 2020, there is no any more single-use plastic in any division of BNP Paribas uh, across uh, 200,000 employees of the company uh, and uh, in uh, 73 uh, countries. Besides this, we have decided to mobilize ourselves particularly to some causes. Clearly, environment and uh, climate change is a key issue. We uh, work a lot uh, for young people. I can see here uh, Yazid Shir, the, the founder of No Quartier en Du Talent, uh, and we do partner with, with them in volunteering, but also in business. Uh, we help entrepreneurs. We are now one of the first bank in the world for accompanying social business, and we are very careful to our uh, uh, local uh, footprint. Finally, just what I want to, to mention, and I will show you in a few seconds uh, a, a film about this, we believe in coalitions. We believe that now uh, we need uh, to have all the people of the business together around the table and trying to find solutions. Uh, and trying to find solutions using sometimes volunteering, sometimes sponsorship, and sometimes the core business. Uh, I will show you an example of a program uh, we run in Senegal with uh, uh, UN uh, women. Uh, it's a country which is very much affected by global warming. Uh, we, the, a lot of the men did uh, uh, leave the north of the country because it was too dry and they couldn't do uh, their uh, historical uh, agriculture. But the women uh, found ways uh, to uh, develop agriculture. And it's important that we uh, help those women to develop their business but also uh, sometimes to defend their rights because sometimes uh, the men come back uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, they are not always very fair with the, with the women. So we believe that if we help the, the women who have created those cooperatives to, to develop themselves and also to to create companies that will uh, be able uh, to uh, discuss with the financial system and with bankers, it will help to uh, empower them. So I will show you a, a very short movie. Uh, it's uh, in French, but it's very short and it's uh, self-explanatory about this uh, program. <laughs> Now, 
problèmes climatiques, surtout là avec, avec, euh, avec la venue du vent. Ça change l'agriculture. Donc ici, nous avons un potentiel de 400 hectares, mais les femmes en exploitent 100. Et nous, euh, nous exigeons un peu l'égalité dans la distribution du foncier. Que les femmes, si euh, le groupe madame a 400 hectares, que le groupe madame femme a aussi 400 hectares. Quoi. On doit devenir des femmes entrepreneurs, des femmes directrices et des femmes euh, gérantes de l'usine. Les femmes m'ont apporté plein de choses, m'ont apporté des formations. Des formations sur euh, le genre, sur la représentation féminine, sur le leadership, sur euh, la gestion financière. Il y a plus maintenant de femmes qui s'adonnent à l'agriculture que, que les hommes. Et ça, c'est pour les femmes. Mais les, les hommes n'ont pas de riserie. Donc ça, c'est une preuve que, euh, du dynamisme des femmes. Donc ils exploitent du riz. Et ce sont les femmes exclusivement qui les gèrent. Depuis le travail du sol, les semis, euh, les engrais, l'entretien, le traitement, jusqu'à la récolte. Ici, ça se justifie dans la zone de Tchagar. Il y a les femmes qui occupent une place prépondérante. Donc ici, je pense qu'avec le projet Paribas, nous parviendrons à booster la production. Thank you. So, what, what, what are we doing uh, concretely? Uh, we are uh, helping uh, to train those women uh, to defend their rights on the land because sometimes people want to take their rights, so they need to be uh, very trained in uh, local law and uh, they need to have programs to developed. Second, we uh, help them to put their companies on the map of the financial institutions because industrially they are very good. The women you have seen there uh, are real industry leaders, but they don't have uh, all the, I would say, all the skills in accountancy and uh, it's very important to help them to go on the map uh, of the financial institutions. Then we help them uh, also uh, to develop their technology. They are, always, oh, they are already very good in technology. Uh, some of them are able to monitor their culture by drones uh, and uh, to, to, to gain a, a lot of time by doing this. Uh, but they, they still need to, to improve. And finally, we, we are in the north of Senegal, very close to the Mauritanian border. It's uh, almost a desert area. Very few international buyers of rice uh, are going there. Uh, Those buyers are our, are our clients, and we can help them to know that uh, this, uh, this uh, equitable and sustainable rice is, uh, is produced in this uh, area. Perfect. So, so that's really a great example. Um, I, I'd like to maybe now shift gear towards talking about technology, because I think both Both of our companies have really technology at the heart, right? I mean, we invest a lot in technology. We, this is a, a great lever for transformation. Um, but of course, technology comes with the power of doing good. But also, we know there are lots of questions about the right use of technology. So I'd like to show a video about, you know, is technology for good or is technology for bad? And then I'll talk about how we're addressing that. So if you can launch the video.
So, so I personally like very much this, this video because we, as a technology company, we help our clients embed digital technologies to, to be more uh, resilient, to be a higher performance. Uh, so we always like to think that technology is a source for good. And indeed, in all the um, CSR work we do, we work with NGOs, we equip them with technology platforms so that they can be more efficient working with their beneficiaries. Our main program is a program we call Skills to Succeed, where we've committed to equip 3 million people with the skills to have a job um, or to be entrepreneurs. And in doing that, we work with NGOs, like for example, during day one, um, you saw Share It, which is a technology incubator. They work with social innovators um, and they advise them on their technology. We work with um, like uh, 1001 Fontaines. They provide water, clean water in Cambodia. We develop for them the app that, it, that uh, helps the entrepreneurs be trained. So, so we like to think that technology can be a lever for good. But as the video showcase, um, technology also has a number of risks, right? I mean, when we think about AI, which was really much a topic in, in uh, the conferences, um, we provide, for example, AI job matching technology so that people who could be disadvantaged because their name or their address reveals that they are from um, minority groups, um, we, with AI, we only scan through competencies and we do some job matching. So, so we really try to use technology for good and, and, uh, and uh, address uh, the potential drawbacks. Um, but indeed, uh, we know as well that AI um, uh, has been attacked for destroying jobs, has been attacked for um, potentially replicating some of the bias um, in, in uh, algorithm that, uh, that we have, has been attacked for uh, being like a black box when we don't really understand um, why, you know, the trans, you know, why those algorithm, uh, what's the outcome, etc. So, the step we are now making at Accenture is to really very proactively equip our client-facing personnel uh, who advise clients with the mindsets, the tools, and techniques to not only respond to a client demand about implementing a new technology but to challenge much more broadly about positive externalities, negative externalities, and how do you mitigate those risks? So for example, um, we um, help our clients transform, and we try to be much more engaging with our clients about what's the future of skills. Um, have they anticipated what type of skills and what types of jobs will be created in the, in the future? Have they anticipated how to train their employee base so that you know, they can um, live through the change? We are putting in place some tools and techniques to have responsible AI so you can have some checks and balances and governance so that you can really check for the, um, for the algorithm that we are putting in place and we can have that dialogue with clients. So I just wanted to give some of uh, those examples because for us as a technology firm, we did a lot in terms of pro bono um, uh, work with social uh, innovators, uh, NGOs. I think now is the time to really embed uh, our responsibility into our commercial offerings and uh, the examples I've just given are, are, are the way we do it. So, so maybe in closing, uh, Antoine, I know this is a big change. I mean, for us, it's a multi-year journey to do that. Maybe uh, I know you've uh, done a lot in terms of how do you drive this culture change? How do you make leaders accountable for responsibility? Maybe we want, you know, in closing, to give a few thoughts on that. Yes, what is very important, you know, uh, Martin Luther King uh, has, didn't say, I, have, I had a nightmare. He said, uh, I had a dream. Uh, and uh, at the moment, uh, you also uh, need uh, to make all this uh, inspiring uh, for people. And uh, to, to a certain extent, make it, making it inspiring for bankers uh, needs also uh, having a very strong KPIs, very strong figures, and uh, very strong metrics. Because uh, we are bankers and we understand figures, and uh, it makes us, uh, it helps us to have a clear vision. But you also need uh, to create community of people who are really 
uh, uh, I would say, the avant-garde uh, of this movement, and this is what we have tried to do. We have tried to create a, to, uh, a community of impact pioneers, pioneers that are uh, spreading the world, uh, finding solutions, working together to convey best practices. I am head of company engagement uh, of the company, so my job is to put positive impact everywhere, but uh, uh, months after months, we have seen all the business creating their own uh, company engagement department to do the same. Uh, and then they created local uh, company engagement correspondent. And then from the top from, uh, to the bottom, we have uh, people uh, that are in charge of de deploying this positive impact. But also, of, of course, we want to have everybody uh, contributing. And this is why uh, we are also uh, providing training. Uh, we are uh, providing very specialized training for people who are uh, uh, running large accounts uh, because it's, some, it's sometimes being sustainable needs a lot of skills. But we are uh, also uh, providing uh, uh, general uh, uh, training for all employees uh, about sustainable issues. So we, we really need uh, to have uh, everybody on board. At the end of the day, we can see that today 75% of the employees of BNP Paribas consider that it is very important to be a leader in sustainable finance and which is also good uh, uh, more or less 75 percent also of our employees considers that the company is doing good in this field. Perfect so you quoted Martin Luther King I'm going to close with Spider-Man different reference but he says with great, res with great power comes great responsibility so I will leave you with, with that thank you. Thank you.